Hello and welcome everybody. Hope all is well today. Have you ever been scrolling through Instagram and you come across that photographer that posts all their photos with the film border around them and wonder to yourself, how can I do that? I want my film photos to have the film border around them. I want to do that too. Well, if you're wondering how to do that, you came to the right place because today I'm going to be showing you exactly how to do that in this video. So unfortunately, a lot of photo labs aren't going to do this for you. I went to my local photo lab and they wouldn't scan the borders around for me, but that's why I ended up getting a scanner. And in that case, that brings up the three things that you need in order to scan your film photos in with the film borders. The first thing is a scanner. I have an Epson V550 scanner and that's what I use to scan all my film negatives. Second thing is a laptop or a PC. And then the third thing is Negative Lab Pro. Negative Lab Pro is just a plugin for Lightroom that you can use to convert your film negatives. So now that we got that out of the way, let's get to scanning some film so I can physically show you how this is done. First things first, we're gonna open up the scanner and reduce as much of that hair and dust as we can. After that, I'm gonna use the film holder to line up my negatives and get them in the correct position before scanning. Alright, so our film's loaded onto the scanner now. So now you have Epson Scan open and you're ready to scan your film. So the settings you should use for using it for Negative Lab Pro is scan it in as a color positive film instead of a color negative film. So then it's still a negative and then you can convert it in Negative Lab Pro. You know, here's my settings for scanning in any film. Um, I usually just do a 2400 DPI unless I'm printing. I'll go up to 3200 instead of the 2400. I usually just keep it right there, keep my scanning quality on high. Of course, you want high quality. And then for your image format, scan it in as a TIFF file. First, let's preview this, see how we're looking, see if we got it lined up correctly. Okay, so as you can see here, I can definitely line this up a bit better. I wanna get the full border in this, you know. I wanna say I shot this on Kodak 200, so yeah, I wanna get that sweet lettering in there too that lets you know what film I shot this on. So let's do a little bit of adjustment here and then we'll try again. See if that's good. So let's try preview again. That's a bit better. Honestly, I'll work with that. I think that'll be good. Now you have your strip of film scanned in on the preview. So now let's frame this up for which photo we want to do here. And I'll do this one right here. So why I'm doing this middle photo just for a good example is there's this thing you're supposed to have when scanning film just straight to the flatbed scanner. I'm technically doing it wrong. I shouldn't be scanning it just straight on the scanner like this. Something that's recommended that you do get for doing this is an anti-Newton ring glass. And it's just this, you know, little glass plate that you put on the scanner and it reduces those Newton rings, which if you know what the Newton ring is, it's kind of like that oily looking like oval that ends up like on your film scans and I've had that happen a lot with expired film I know it's just kind of like a scanner mishap I want to say I'm not entirely too sure about it anti-newton ring glass helps prevent that and I thought it would be something that would be like kind of cheap I could just you know grab on Amazon or something it turned out they're kind of expensive just for like a plate of glass basically so that's why I don't have one if you can afford that try not to scan straight to the glass we're broke around here so this is how we're doing it all right so now we got our photo right here ready to go let's scan this puppy see how we look
Now we have our photos ready to go, so let's open up Lightroom here and import these. Alright, so, have our negatives up here now on Lightroom, so let's develop these things. Go over here to develop, and looks like this one can be straightened up just a little bit. That should be good. Alright, so then next, just crop it however you're wanting to crop it. Depends on how much of the film border you want to show. So typically, whenever using Negative Lab Pro, what you're going to do is completely take out any of these borders and just scan the image. But in this case, we're not going to do that. We are going to scan it with all of this included too. So what we're going to do is, so we're going to use this fancy tool right here, click on the border there, and then right here is the point where you would crop all this out just down to the image itself, but we're not going to do that. We're ready to go ahead and convert it. If you've already have Negative Lab Pro as a plugin on Lightroom, you should be good to just control in that bad boy. So that's what we're going to do. Control in, and then right here we're going to convert negatives and let's see how we're looking. Alright, so whenever doing it like this, this is what you're going to run into and you're probably going to think, oh crud, I did it wrong. But you didn't. You're just going to need to go in right here and just fix it up a bit. I want to keep those lights decently light because I don't want to get rid of any of the highlights or the whites in the photo. We will put these darks down a good bit, our blacks down a bit. Maybe we could do the lights a bit more. Really it just takes some messing with and each photo is going to be different. Whenever you do scan with the film borders in, it's probably going to definitely look different. You just got to kind of mess around with it until it's looking right for you. Alright, Kodak. Woo wee! Okay, we got to do something about that. Oh my god, I'm just going to keep it with that. And we can do the rest in Lightroom. That's looking alright to me. So we have it right here. We just scanned it in. So let's just do a few more finishing touches here in Lightroom. I like a good saturated photo. If you do the saturation to these photos whenever you scan them like this, it kind of gives it more of the true to what film stock you're shooting with. Looking about it, to be honest with you. Alright, so let's save this photo and see how we're looking. Alright, so let's do this photo that's on the end of this strip and see how this one looks. So, once again, I'll crop it down to how I want it to look. Go through here, use this fancy tool, do that, and now we're ready to convert. Let's convert that negative. This is always the best part. Okay, again, you should expect this by now. So now, Take everything down. Oh, dude, this photo is sick. Why haven't I scanned this? This one's turning out better than the other one, in my opinion. I'll be honest, like some photos just work for this and others don't. It's kind of tricky. Like I said, I might not be doing this the right way, but this is how I do it. So I'm showing you guys how I do it in hopes it could help you. Honestly, that's looking pretty good. So I just need to crop this down a little bit more here. All right, so here we have our two photos that we just scanned in with the film borders on them and they're looking pretty good. I would say this one's just a little bit off. There's a bit of a blue cast in the border on this one, but it's whatever. Honestly, I'm not that faced by it. It just depends on, you know, how picky you are with your photos. This one I'm actually really stoked on and I can't believe I haven't scanned this photo like somewhat recently because this is really good. So that's how you're going to scan some fill borders in on some 35 millimeters. So now let me show you how to do it on 120. It's going to be essentially the same thing, but in my opinion, 120 is a bit easier than 35 millimeter to kind of mess with while doing this just because it's a bigger negative so it's less tedious and tiny to work with and get right. Now we've got our 120 loaded up. Let's preview this and see if we got it straight and looking good, which I'm pretty sure we did. Cause like I said, I'm a bit more confident with my 120 scanning when it comes to scanning in film borders. All right, so once again, we're gonna go right for this middle one right here. 
And I chose a photo that I shot with my Yashica A because these 6x6 six six photos always tend to work out really well. Although this one might not be straight. So the only bad thing about if you do want to scan in your film negatives with film borders is you've got to make sure you shoot your photos completely straight. If you've got to straighten your photo at all, it's just not going to work out because that square, that border, is always going to be straight. But it depends on how you shoot the photo, whether it's going to work out or not. If you're wanting to scan with the film border in, you can't really, you know, change it after that because if you try to straighten your photo, it's going to make the border crooked. That's the one downside to doing it is you got to make sure you're careful about, you know, if you shoot your photos level or not. Alright, might as well go ahead and do this one too. Alright, so now we have these 120 negative scanned in, so let's do the same thing in Lightroom again and import them. Alright, so we have them both right here. So once again, you guys know the deal at this point. Take it to develop. Let's, let's just see. Let's give a test here. Okay, that's not bad. It looks like it's going to be a little bit crooked down here at the bottom, but we'll, we'll see if we can make this work and if it doesn't look too bad. So just like 35mm, you're just going to, you know, choose how much of this border you want to scan in. And usually I do it a bit thinner for these 6x6 photos, but I'm going to keep the Kodak Portrait 400 in on this one, just so I can show you guys, you know, the, the whole deal. Alright, so Control N, open up Negative Lab Pro here, and let's convert and see how we're looking. Ooh! Okay! This one's not looking too bad, like right from the get-go. This is actually a good looking photo. Oh man, I don't want to soften the highs, then I lose that blue in the sky. Wow, this is so nice. Let's see what it looks like when I use... Okay, not bad. As you can see, the 120 kind of just works out better whenever scanning like this. I feel like it kind of knows what I'm trying to do here. For the 35mm though, I can tell like Negative Lab Pro is kind of getting a little confused. Like, what are you, what are you doing here, man? Ah, oh, okay, cool. So this is about the only time I've ever actually been excited about having a Newton ring on a photo, but... Here's what a Newton ring is. Right here is what that nasty SOB is. You're not gonna want that in your photos. And this right here is a result of me not scanning with an anti-Newton ring glass and scanning straight to the scanner. But, luckily enough, we know what to do in these dire situations. Take that fucker out. All right, and this photo is almost done here. I think what I will do is just add some saturation here. I love me some saturation, yes I do. And let's go ahead and convert our next photo and see how this one's looking too. All right, so again, definitely know the deal at this point. All right, control N, open negative lab, convert, and here we go, let's see the magic. Yes, dude, okay, another gorgeous one. Kind of like to just kind of mess around with each and every setting and just see what everything's looking like. Honestly, I'm not going to do too much to this one. Just add a bit of saturation here. And yeah, there we go. So there we have it. There's two 35mm photos and two 120 photos, all scanned in with the film borders around them. Now, just keep in mind again, the main thing with this is having Negative Lab Pro. And I hate saying that because it does cost a hundred bucks, but I wouldn't be recommending any of you to purchase something if I didn't truly believe in it and truly believe that it does help your photography immensely. Because I know it did mine. Getting Negative Lab Pro is a complete game changer for my film photography so I highly suggest it and then with a scanner that's also a huge recommendation to get it just kind of cuts down your cost of shooting film a little bit it's not fully developing yourself which completely cuts a lot of cost out but there is a little bit there that it helps and it relieves some of the work that the lab has to do whenever you drop your film off for them if you have any questions or concerns, leave a comment down below and just let me know. Feel free to let me know if there's anything you're stuck on or having trouble with. I'll do my best to answer in the best way I possibly can. That's going to do it for this video. Hope you all enjoyed. Hope you learned something today. Thanks for watching. Take it easy. Mm -hmm.